While the unemployment rate in Broward County is relatively low, just under 4%, it jumps to more than 10 to 15% in some communities. The city of Lauder Hill is home to three zip codes with higher than average unemployment rates and lower rates of higher education. But all that is about to change. Lauder Hill is the first city in the county to team up with Broward College for its latest initiative called Broward Up, which stands for Unlimited Potential. It's a new program under Broward College's new president that aims to make post-secondary education accessible to all, no matter where you live or what your circumstances are. Here to share more is Broward College President Gregory Adam Hale. Mr. President, great to have you with us. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So you're kind of in the infancy of your presidency, if mm -hmm. you will, just had your investiture back in March. That's right. So kind of tell us how it's been going for you in this new position. Uh, it's been going incredibly well. Uh, on May 9th uh, was the date of my appointment to serve, which officially began July 1st, although I was giving my first speech, I think, on May 9th at about <laughs> noon. Um, but it's been an absolutely fantastic privilege to find a way to make a difference in our community and, of course, leveraging post-secondary education as the best way to do so. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Broward College. I think a lot of people in our community watching remember it as Broward Community College. Sure. You remember BCC. That's right. Now it's Broward College because you do offer four-year uh, degree programs, That's correct? Right. That's right. So let's talk a little bit about the college now in its present state, how it's changed, and how many students, how many students does it serve? Yeah, we have about 63,000 students at Broward wow, College, and lot. at any given day of the week, we're in the top 10 in terms of the size of our institution. And notwithstanding the fact that we do offer 13 now baccalaureate degrees, and it makes a great difference for our students and the community, particularly because, because those baccalaureate degrees are workforce oriented. But we also continue to remain incredibly accessible, which is really the focal point of who we are, trying to make sure that everyone in our community knows that Broward College is a great way to move from maybe a lower income quartile to income increasing your ability to make a significant wage, of course, changing your family, and not only that, but the generations that come beyond you as well. So talk about Broward Up. Yeah. This is important for our community. Sure. So yeah. you've obviously touched on the fact that we have a relatively low unemployment rate in Broward County. Right. It is not just under 4% right now. The latest numbers indicate that it's at 2.8%. And so one of the things we're always thinking about is not what the overall numbers look like, but are we serving our entire county? And so Broward Up, really, when I think about the personal impact that we're trying to make, and it comes from when I think about the fact that I grew up in New York City, mm -hmm. and I grew up in an area called South Jamaica, Queens, New York, and it wasn't the best neighborhood. And so one of the things that my mother did was well, she actually did something that I would call courageous, uh, and she lied about my address so I could go to school in a different neighborhood wow. because she knew the neighborhood that we were in was very challenging, particularly from um, an educational perspective. And so that was in third grade. And interestingly enough, I was graduating elementary school, sixth grade, in 1989. And this neighborhood was far more affluent than the neighborhood I grew up in. And I said to a sixth grader, isn't this amazing? We'll be the last class of the decade. And he immediately says to me, no, we're going to be the last class of the millennium because we're going to graduate college in 1999. Wow. And so that was the first time I had ever heard the word college. Mm -hmm. I had no college graduates in my family, and I come from a relatively large family. And I think about not just the fact that I was hearing about college for the first time in the sixth grade, but the reality of I was hearing about college for the first time from another sixth grader who knew exactly what year he was going to graduate. Mm. And when we think about that kind of divide, hopefully we all find it abhorrent. And now Broward Up is really existing to bridge that chasm. A lot of the students or potential students who are from some of our lower income areas, they don't have the same kind of exposure to post-secondary education. Maybe it's because they are first generation potential college students and that conversation is not being had at the dinner table. In the worst case scenario, they may very well be told that it is not for them or they are not capable of success. Us. So Broward Up is really about, as you mentioned, making sure that we recognize that everyone has the unlimited potential to pursue a better life through higher education, and that means going into communities. I was going to ask you that because you've partnered with the city of Lauder Hill. Sure. You mentioned that three of these zip codes, which have this issue with unemployment, uh, are in Lauder Hill. That's so they right. have a vested interest in bringing this program to their area, to That's their right. city. So how do you do that? How do you bridge the gap? Because certainly you could get to the, the campus and take classes, but it's more than that. You need to go into the community, and that's, pro that's what this program's all about, right? Right, right. So I want to, you asked earlier about Broward College and potentially who our students are. Yeah. And one of the things to be conscious of is our average age student is 27 years old. Most of our students are part-time students. A lot of them are low-income students. 
this all means they have challenges, right? It might be a childcare challenge, it might be a transportation challenge. There's a student who I love to remind myself of who was going to our North Campus and she walked four miles wow. every day because she did not have any other form of transportation to get back and forth to school. Now while that student has extraordinary will, it's important to recognize that there are many students who are very capable but may not have for a number of reasons the ability to walk four miles back and forth in any given day. And so how do we bridge those challenges? You think about most post-secondary institutions and even Broward College. Mm -hmm. We say we are open, we, pro we know we provide quality education, we've been in the top ten numerous times in this nation, but oftentimes we've let the barriers get in the way of a student's success. And so this is an opportunity to remove some of those barriers, transportation mm -hmm. being an obvious one. Also, just bringing in the knowledge of opportunity to go to post-secondary education. So how do you do that, though? Do you yeah. go into the, into the high schools? That's right. Yeah. So one of the things we do is, so you think about the Lauder Hill opportunity. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're looking at doing, and they're leveraging space for us. Mm. They've identified where we could be, and then we could provide programming. When we think about the cultural change we're trying to make, it's going into communities and staying there as opposed to bouncing in and out. Other great examples are the Boys and Girls Club, where we're leveraging in par a partnership with them, where they have space in their communities. We know that um, the parents are coming to the Boys and Girls Club because they're dropping off their students, their children, but this is an opportunity for us to be in the Boys and Girls Club and providing programming to their parents. Same thing with the city of Lauder Hill, same thing with other organizations, the Urban League, another great example. And all of these organizations or cities are strategically located in communities of need, which is where we know we need to be. And one of the other key components of this is that we know we don't have the resources to build new buildings. Sure. Right? So these partnerships, knowing that we're able to leverage underutilized facilities, our community libraries, for example. There are 37 libraries in Broward County, at least one of which is in one of our communities of need. And so we've been able to look at these underutilized libraries and say, how about providing programming there again yeah, so yeah. students in these neighborhoods can make sure they have the opportunity. When you talk about community partnerships, so I'm sure, too, a lot of the businesses, and maybe even some of those listening to this right now yeah. are saying, wow, maybe we can get some of our employees into some of these training programs. That's right at Broward College, mm -hmm. but talk about, there's a funding aspect to all of this, sure. right? So yeah. where does that all come from? Well, so what we've been able to do so far is kind of leverage the resources that we have. As we already talked about, we're not going to look at building new buildings necessarily. If the opportunity exists, and so be it, we'd love to take advantage of that as well. But there are resources necessary because we're going to be providing faculty, and we already have, and training materials, and technology, for example. We know that when we look in these communities, there's a significant technology divide. They may not have access to the uh, computer is necessary and the digital divide is a very clear thing we know we need to satisfy. So bringing in corporate partners and also investors who can help bridge that is also going to be of significant value. Talk about what you think some of the, the biggest myth or barriers are to higher education. Yeah. Well, that's what's happening in keeping people away from, you know, taking it that next step. Yeah, I, I think some of it is frankly not having the exposure, right? And uh, if you've never had a family member go, if you've never had a parent go or a friend go, you kind of think, well, maybe that's not for me. Um, I even think about the fact that we have a site on Las Solas, which is absolutely gorgeous, and yet that is only about a five blocks away from the 33311 zip code. Mm -hmm. And those students, potential students, are not coming to Broward College because it's a different site. It's uncomfortable, potentially. And so we have to think about how do we meet potential students where they are? Mm -hmm. How do we make it as comfortable as possible for them? I'll give you um, uh, a quick story. You know that I have a, a, a two daughters and one seven-year-old. And my seven-year-old daughter goes to an elementary school in which every single day when she walks into her classroom, when she looks above the threshold of her doorway, she sees a picture of a mascot in the name of a college. She's in the first grade. And every single classroom has the same symbol above it. They're making it impossible for those kids not to think about college as a component of their future. And the question becomes for us, yeah. how do we make it impossible, no matter what community you're coming from, for them not to see the opportunity of post-secondary education in their future. Every one of us, you and I and every economist in the world will tell you that the better post-secondary education you have, the more likely you are to change the economic outcomes of your circumstances mm -hmm. and your family and those that come beyond you. Yeah. We have to be very intentional about making mm -hmm. that happen, not dancing in and out of lives, but making sure that we are constant mainstay so they see it every day and realize, realize that as the only potential it's kinda for like their future. It's kind of like that little boy, the student, that you said talked about going to college yeah. uh, when you were in elementary school. That's exactly he knew. Right. He knew when he was going to graduate. He already knew, right. Yeah. And I got lucky enough to know, but it should not be reliant on luck. Right.
to make that happen. Thank you so much. It was so great to meet you. No, no, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me yeah, here. Yeah, best of luck with your presidency of Broward College. We'd love to have you back. Oh, I'd love to be back. All right. And to learn more about the Broward Up initiative, visit broward.edu slash Broward Up. We'll also have this information for you on our Facebook page at yourself, FL.